Uh, my name is Galina. I would like to introduce Valian to start with, and then I will uh, put Ahata to uh, do the presentation. So Valian uh, Clinic and Hospital, GCA accredited, supported by international uh, team of Western board certified physicians, which are highly trained nurses, sophisticated technology and innovating practices. We specialize mainly in health checkups programs, uh, corporate wellness programs, psychology, mental health service, uh, services, outpatient clinic, inpatient and diagnostic services. We are located in City Walk, Dubai. Um, I'll be putting on Ahad, who is our dietitian in Nutrilogist, uh, and she will be presenting further. You can just push on. My name is Ahad, and I'm the dietitian here at Valiant Clinic. Uh, we're going to focus today's session on how you can experience the benefits of fasting during Ramadan, um, and what the really what really the effects of fasting are on your body and physical health. How you can improve your iftar and suhoor meals, and how you can do fasting accurately, um, and then how to improve improve sleep and what kind of schedule you should be sticking to in Ramadan. So our agenda for today is the effects of fasting on physical health, how religious fasting can be used beneficially to boost productivity, and how you can boost brain health and mental focus as well. Um, what the impact of sleep, uh, importance of sleep, what lack of sleep does, and uh, how it affects stress and productivity, um, and how we can improve your quality of sleep during Ramadan. And how can we uh, boost your nutrition intake and general health during this holy period? And then what a healthy eating and fitness schedule would look like throughout the rest of the month. OK, so fasting and physical health. We experience through fasting, we experience lots of changes in sleep, food, fitness, fitness, productivity. I'm sure most of you who are fasting during this month and have been doing so for the past of many years, you do realize that there is a huge shift in how you feel during this month. Some of you feel better. Some of you feel more sluggish and tired. Um, there's a reason for all of these changes, and we'll talk about what the reason is. So just introducing fasting um, in ancient practices, you know, every culture around the globe does fasting, it is part of every culture, just differently based on their religious practices. So Muslims to fast during Ramadan, Indians in my culture, we have a different side of fasting, which is not a complete fast, but we abstain from certain foods. Different cultures, cultures have different practices. More recently, the wellness world and the nutrition world has uh, adopted this idea of intermittent fasting, which is going back into many years ago um, and seeing what the benefits of fasting were and all of the cultures that were practicing fasting, what were the benefits, how was it affecting our body, and we finally come, come up with a consensus that this is actually good for us. So it's a very backdated thing. It's a very ancient practice. And somewhere along the route, we figured out that this is actually very, very healthy for our body for many reasons. What are the physiological changes that happen during this time when you're fasting, whether that's a intermittent fasting, whether that's a Ramadan fasting, whether that's simply not eating any food for 12 hours? It may not be a complete fast, but just a short amount of time. So when done correctly, the most important part being here that fasting needs to be done correctly. When done correctly, fasting has lots of positive uh, changes on your body and your biochemical, um, basically the insides of your body and how your systems are functioning. OK, so ideally, most likely we see an increase in good cholesterol. So we have two kinds of cholesterol. One is good. One is bad. We want more of the good one because it has more of a protective effect over the bad one. So when doing correctly, fasting does help increase good cholesterol, which also helps decrease bad cholesterol and triglycerides. So it basically helps you manage your cholesterol levels better. Um, it increases, it causes an increase in red blood cells. So red blood cells are the cells that carry oxygen across your body. So it's an increase in red blood cells helps your body stay more active, more alive and more energetic. An increase in white blood cells, which help you uh, help immune fun function and prote protect you from any inflammation and damage that may be happening in, in, internally. It decreases inflammation markers. So because of the increase in white cells, it decreases inflammation and helps your body cope with stress better. So 
this image is just a breakdown. We'll go about this. Uh, we'll go into detail in a minute, but this is just a breakdown of what happens throughout the uh, throughout the month. So when you fast, your you have increased cellular repair because you're giving your body a break from eating. It has the chance to renew your cells and basically almost make new cells. So this gives your body a chance to repair, renew, and be more prepped for any stress that you may be adding on to it. You also have improved blood sugar control because your body naturally has the ability to absorb glucose, absorb, absorb blood sugar, sugar, and regulate energy. Now, because of our modern day lifestyle, this has been disrupted. We cannot uh, control our energy levels. We sometimes feel sluggish and tired. But when your body gets used to fasting, it gets it goes back to normal and baseline and it has better sh control over how you're feeling how energetic you're feeling and this in turn controls your appetite so when your blood sugars are not stable your appetite will be higher your body will keep asking for food but when you have controlled blood sugars you also uh, get increased appetite control so you also are more you're technically resetting your metabolic rate and then you're you also release growth hormone if you have a prolonged period of fasting which helps your body renew cells at a faster rate and then you have improved cardiovascular function you um you decrease bad cholesterol you increase good cholesterol which helps you manage general health better Body, mind, and mood changes. So this is what we feel physically. What we talked about earlier is what we don't really feel. Um, we don't really feel it. It's more internal, unless we are very, very in tune with our body signals. But the body, the mind, and how you feel in general is what you feel physically. So because it's a significant life change, so during Ramadan, you know, you're not eating throughout the day. So it's a very big lifestyle change from what you do generally beyond this month. So we have positive and we have negative changes. Positive changes, you're resetting your metabolism like we talked about earlier. You, uh, you're giving your cells the chance to renew and reset so your body can absorb food better, it can digest food better, and you can feel more energetic. It also actually boosts brain productivity because, again, remember, if your cells are renewing, your brain cells are also renewing, and it gives your body a chance to kind of not be damaged by the constant intake of food because when we consume food at a rate that we do generally you're you don't really have the chance to digest your food you're eating the food doesn't digest and then you eat again so there is no chance in this whole timeline there's no really time for your body to reset the cells when you fast this is a golden opportunity so it, it's a chance to re regenerate and renew your cells and then weight loss can obviously be a byproduct. For most people, weight loss is the first thing they experience, but for a lot of people, it's the very last thing they experience. It's always a byproduct. It's not what we want from fasting. It can be used as a positive benefit, but it's not the only thing we get from fasting. Negative changes. Shift away from circadian rhythm. So um, I'm not sure if any of you have heard of circadian rhythm, but circadian rhythm is basically your body's natural clock. So you wake up with the sun, you should be waking up with the sun, and you should naturally be winding down when the sun sets. Our lifestyles these days don't allow that. Sometimes we're waking up later, uh, we're staying up later in the day, we're not really winding down by sunset. So this natural clock is getting disrupted. And fasting, and because it's a really, really big change, you're concentrating your food in the night, the circadian rhythm is, is not very accurate. You also have an increase in irritability, mood swings, and headaches. Because of the lack of food, the lack of hydration, there is internal changes going on causing these, um, these things. And this is what you physically experience most of the time. You experience lack of sleep because you have to eat in the night. You have, so sleep is not really a priority. And then you have increased levels of fatigue because your body doesn't really get much energy to keep going, but we want to keep going with our modern day pace lifestyles. So how do you boost this productivity? Um, you know, how do you use fasting to your benefit? So most people feel tired, unproductive, and there's really, really a way to fix it. It's how you fast, do you fast correctly? Do you break your fast correctly? That is 
the only way to fix it. So breaking fasting and breaking your fast correctly with the correct food, with the co correct balance of food can give you a range of mood boosting and mood elevating benefits. The quantity of your sleep also usually decreases, but how well you're sleeping and quality is very, very important. So your lifestyle habits during this month is very important in determining whether you're sleeping well or whether you're not sleeping well. So if you're waking up throughout your sleep, if you're not really meeting even six hours is the very, very lower limit of normal, then we have an issue. And then studies are also showing that you know, these days that during the fasting time, people are actually more productive. So we have to do it correctly to get to that productivity level. So what is fasting done correctly? We want to avoid traditional habits of overindulging on fried food. So if you go back to a traditional iftar table, it's, you know, lots of carbohydrates, lots of fried foods, many, many sweets available, and it becomes a whole feast. And that can be too much food for your body to digest at one time. So it's overwhelming your digestive system and causing even more fatigue. So eating a well-balanced meal at suhoor and iftar will pre prevent any overwhelming to your body and digestive system. It will prevent any drops and spikes in blood sugar with too much food, uh, which eventually cause fatigue and low energy. And then creating a routine also helps. We're technically almost halfway into Ramadan. So this is something you'll have to apply for the rest of the month. But creating a routine really, really helps in terms of your body getting used to that routine for the rest of the month. So when you create a routine, it knows what to expect. When there's no routine and everything every day is different, your body doesn't know what to expect and it's going to react in the most negative way. And then eating plenty of healthy fats. Healthy fats, you know, everybody talks about these these um, in the new age of wellness. So things like avocados, nuts, peanut butter, almond butter, olives, olive oil. These really help keep you full when you, you eat this during the eating window. They help you keep they help keep you full. They boost your brain. So especially things like walnuts, chia seeds, flax seeds. They help brain function and they give you sustained energy. So they don't cause any sh crashes in energy, um, which can help you throughout the fasting period. What about sleep? How do you achieve good quality sleep? Again, it goes back to fasting correctly. So lack of sleep is not uncommon. It's very, very common when we are talking about the traditional way of Ramadan fasting. You know, you're waking up, either you're waking up um, to eat your suhul meal or you're sleeping later in the day, uh, in the night. Uh, you're not sleeping as much. If you're working, it's not very it's not very likely that you're sleeping many, many hours. And it's it's your whole sleep cycle is disrupted especially with the food timings and the gatherings as well, it can cause insufficient and bad quality sleep. Daytime sleepiness, most people sleep very, feel very sleepy in the, night, uh, in the daytime because of lack of sleep, and this drops productivity again. And then it also, because you have lack of sleep, your body now needs to compensate and say that I need to recover because I didn't get enough sleep. And the only way to do that is to ask for more food. So you're going to, your body's going to ask for more food. You're going to crave fatty foods, high sugar foods to be able to compensate for that extra energy. So it becomes a cycle. You have poor sleep, you get more tired, you eat more, and then you get more tired again. So it becomes a vicious cycle and we really need to intervene and fix that. <coughs> Make a sleep schedule and stick to it. This is probably the most difficult thing to do, but you have to make a schedule, decide what time you're going to eat, decide what time you're going to go to sleep, decide what time you're going to wake up and really stick to it. Accumulate averagely eight hours of sleep throughout the day. You know, it may be wise to consider a power nap sometimes in the afternoon or in the evening just to give your body enough of that rest and recovery period. It's, it's difficult to do, but at least seven to eight hours is probably ideal. Choose healthy foods and stay active. So if you're not active, if you're doing absolutely no exercise, your muscles are not tired and it will not help you sleep restfully. The more you, you, the more you stay active, remain active, your muscles are getting tired and that is when you're recovering throughout the night and sleeping restfully. Otherwise, you'll notice you're, you're waking up a lot during the night. 
What are foods that cause dis disrupted sleep? These are foods we want to stay away from, especially because we're eating our first meal at iftar around you know, 7, 7, 38, and we don't want to be eating any foods that cause, cause you to stay awake. So caffeine, this is not a uh, new knowledge. We should really want to stay away from caffeine at iftar. This can be in the form of tea, it can be in the form of coffee, um, and it can even be in the form of chocolate for that matter. Excessive spice. We um, excessive, excessive spice or spicy foods can keep your body awake. Uh, fried, fatty and junk foods will also, because your body is working harder to digest these foods, it will try to keep you awake. Processed foods and snacks, sweets and sugar in any form. It can cause energy spikes and drops, and then you won't really be able to sleep very well. Maintaining a healthy eating and fitness schedule. So how do you optimize your food intake, your nutrition intake, and exercise to feel your best for the rest of the month? So the idea is when you only have a small window to fuel your body and eat adequately, how do you do it well and sufficiently? You need to eat slower in smaller but more frequent portions. So if you eat a large meal, you probably will are likely to get lesser energy and lesser calories, but you will overwhelm your digestive system and then you'll feel too full. So we want to eat slower. We want to eat smaller meals so your body can really absorb the nutrition and you can maximize the benefit of eating. So you can divide your food into portions. If you eat it all together, it will cause bloating and even more tiredness. You need to eat a well-balanced suhoor. This is the most important thing during Ramadan. If you do not eat a well-balanced suhoor meal, if your suhoor is either too high in sugar, too low in protein, or too low in healthy fats, you will not have enough energy to get through the day. So you need to ensure your suhoor meal has a couple of things. These are the few things you need to ensure they have. It needs to have a whole grain carbohydrate. So it can look like oatmeal, it can look like a whole grain toast, it could look like even brown rice. Things like quinoa also are beneficial. It needs to have a healthy fat. So anything like peanuts, almonds, walnuts, peanut butter, almond butter, avocado uh, are good ideas. It needs to have some protein as well. So if eggs are your um, if, if if eggs are your thing, you can add eggs. If you prefer a meat, you can add some meat. If you want a vegetarian source of protein, some lentils and uh, pulses are great. And then it needs to have fiber. So fiber can come from fruit, it can come from vegetables, and then you're also getting some fiber from the whole grain carbohydrate. The other thing you need to do is you need to focus on foods that have more nutrition in smaller quantities. So all of these foods or superfoods in today's day really help. So you need to choose healthy fats that will give you a lot of energy in small amounts. And then whole grains will also give you a nutritional advantage instead of eating grains that have no nutrition. So if you're eating white rice and white bread, it really has no nutrition, but you're still eating more than you would otherwise. Let's, let's go a little bit deeper into this. We need to build a better support. So you need to choose a complex carbohydrate. So oatmeal, uh, whole grain bread, and then even you could even do um, sweet potatoes or potatoes if you like, because if you miss this out, your body will not have enough energy. Carbohydrates will always be your preferred source of energy for your body. You need to add some protein. So lean meats, eggs, if you are vegetarian or vegan, some fool, chickpeas, hummus are more traditional ideas, or you could go towards the tofu as well, no problem. Healthy fats, nuts, tahini, nut butter, avocado, are really, really, really important to keep you fueled, to keep you energetic, and to keep your hormones balanced more than anything else. And then you you can add some nutritional boosters. So you can add chia seeds and flax seeds for that extra, extra fiber and energy. You can add some, uh, if you are into the superfoods uh, area, you can add some uh, functional powders. You can add uh, some vegetable powders just to kind of boost the nutrition of the meal you're taking. 
So what examples could be? Uh, you could have a bowl of oatmeal with some protein powder and some nut butter. That's one option. You could also have a Greek yogurt bowl with some granola, um, some protein powder on the side or eggs on the side with some fruit and some nut butter. Uh, you could go the traditional way where you can have a whole grain bread with some eggs, some fool, some tahini or hummus, and that would be a well-balanced meal as well. Iftar. So iftar is slightly different. You're breaking your fast and you want to break it correctly. So ideally, traditionally, you break your fast with dates, which is fine. And then you want to first focus on hydration because remember, your body has had no water for many, many hours. So you're, you now you need to replenish these water stores. OK, so high hydration foods such as watermelon, cucumbers, soups, salads will help you hydrate your body faster, including drinking water as well. Then for your main meal, you need to choose a high protein meal because you want to make sure you're getting your protein requirements and you don't want to be losing muscle mass, mass throughout the fast. So high protein meal with some carbohydrates. So you can do brown rice, brown bread, some quinoa, potatoes or sweet potatoes. And then you need to add lots of vegetables for that additional fiber to make, make sure you're still meeting your nutrition requirements through shorter meals. Remember that you need to break your meal down. So after you break your fast with maybe some dates and then, you know, a fruit or a water based foods or some soups or salad, you want to give your body at least a 30 minute gap before you eat a full main meal. This is slightly difficult to do, but if you do it, you will experience much more of a benefit. Hydration important. So when with the long fasting hours, we lose lots of minerals and it causes a mineral imbalance. So dehydration is very common. So at and after iftar, make sure you're drinking water at least every 30 minutes, every 60 minutes. The idea is you still want to meet your two to three liter water requirement throughout the period that you are able to drink water. So from iftar to suhoor, make sure you're drinking at least two liters of water consistently. Uh, again, choose high hydration foods like bananas, Greek yogurt, watermelon, all melons and cucumbers throughout the time so you can prevent dehydration even further. Coconut water is another good idea at iftar. As soon as you break your fast, you can have a date and then you can have some coconut water because it helps you replenish your potassium stores, which helps you hydrate faster. And then at the end of it, if you if you find yourself struggling to drink two liters of water, an electrolyte supplement can be used. An electrolyte supplement has all the necessary minerals, minerals to help you get your uh, get your body in a hydrated state very fast. Exercise and fitness. So it's very important to maintain or at least maintain your level of activity. It may not be as intense, but make sure you're doing something on a daily basis. So just continue to train. It, you may have been someone who was exercising, you know, at a level of intensity that is 10 every day. But obviously, because of the change in food intake, because of the change in lifestyle, your body's ability to keep up the with that will decrease. So see how you feel, but just move. Some movement will always help you. It's okay that your fitness levels will drop. If you remain active, you can always build them up, build them back up after Ramadan. If you stop all activity, building that fitness level up, uh, back up will be even more difficult. And then this is obviously a personal choice, but depending on the time you prefer to work out, I recommend that you know, doing workout early in the morning is not ideal and not recommended because if you push yourself too hard, you um, will drop your blood sugar and then there's no food or water to help you come back to baseline. So you could choose to exercise right before iftar and break your fast after that, or you can do exercise after breaking your fast before your main meal, where you have some food, you've had some hydration, and then you're able to push your body to a certain extent. So it can be either Either before iftar or after iftar, it's really personal choice. Um, try both, see which one works better. So the main takeaways from this whole presentation is that you need to know and you need to believe that fasting can actually boost productivity when done correctly. So we don't want to be in a situation that, you know, we always think that 
I'm going to fast and I'm going to feel not so great. We can actually free, feel great. We just have to do it correctly. The second thing is you need to create a schedule and stick to it as much as possible. This is a schedule for eating, for sleeping and exercise. If you do this on a repeat basis, your body knows what to expect and it can help you through it. You need to eat a well-balanced meal for sure to set the tone for the rest of the day. If you don't eat a balanced meal, if it's missing any of the nutrition during suhoor, it will cause you to feel sluggish, feel tired and lack of energy throughout the day. And then try your very best to stay away from fried and sugary foods. It's it can get difficult, but at least 80 percent of the time we like to create a 80 percent, 80, 20 balance. So 80 is 80 percent of the time you're eating well, staying away from the foods that we know are not so great for us. And then 20 percent of the time you allow yourself that flexibility to have some fun, enjoy this time with your family and just enjoy the whole month in general. Thank you very much. Um, do you have any questions? OK, I don't see any questions, so I think that's probably I think probably you've covered all areas. Uh, thanks again, everybody.